Harbor Freight's done it again. Not even pulling out my nuts for this one. Not just Harbor Freight, but Pittsburgh. They've come out with some sweet wire connectors that actually are pretty comparable to the Wagos. These are the Wago 221 wire connectors and they've really set the standard pretty high for wire connectors. There have been a whole bunch of knockoffs that have come out and it is hard to pass up when the price is just so much cheaper, but I tend to keep these around for the little hobby stuff, nothing going in the walls and that's really just because I probably won't be able to do it now, but I have been able to pull these ones out. These are pretty comparable in size to the Wagos. And that is all until the big boy comes into town. And seriously, check out the size of these. Not even just Harbor Freight, but Pittsburgh themselves have come out with an awesome wire connector, very comparable to, yes, the Wago 221. Nobody ever wants to go cheap when you're dealing with electricity. And so, you know what? Here's the ratings, at least what they all say they can do. The Pittsburgh is good from 24 to 12 gauge stranded, and then at 24 down to 10 gauge with solid. These are CE for the Euros and then UL listed, 600 max volt. And now the thing that we really all care about is there's no amperage rating. I think I saw somewhere or there's a comment somewhere. I don't know, I'll try to find it. I wanna say that these had the same 32 amp rating as both the Chinese and the Wagos. These are the Wago 221s. Yes, I do know that there are different sizes. And since it's a three connection, I'm going with these ones. So at 450 volts, these can go up to 32 amps and 221 degrees. And just like the others, these are UL listed. Like the Pittsburgh, the cheaper ones, the writing is molded in, so it's really difficult to see, but they are CE certified. And then they do have the same 450 volts max and able to handle 32 amps. With my very scientific pull test, the wire did not come out either out of the Wagos or the Pittsburgh until I started twisting it, which makes sense. It's kind of like how those other cheaper ones, you can loosen the wire by twisting it either way. And the cheap ones on most of the terminals, I was able to pull the wire straight out without even twisting. And of course that piqued my curiosity. So I did a little destructive testing and just to see kind of the difference between all of these. The Wago was very difficult to actually rip apart. As you can tell it's, whoops. It is pretty much a one piece molded, I guess, uh, shell. And then you've got a little common bar and then the little clamps. These clamps have a different color. I have a feeling that they are probably a stronger material. I'm not gonna go do any metallurgic testing, but uh, they do hold being a smaller size compared to, holy freak, just check out this common bar. It's all one piece and I mean, just massive. It is a two piece. This was very easy just to break apart. Well, not very easy, but I was able to split it apart. Uh, you can tell two pieces. You got the, the three levers and then just the giant uh, terminal. And the cheap one was the easiest to break apart. I just had to flip off the lid, uh, still a two piece. And then it just had a couple of the different bars in there, the, the clamping piece, and then kind of your common terminal. This one is, uh, they're not separated, but a very similar in size, the, at least the pieces to the Wagos. I just know that these two hold really well and this one, not so much. I've seen other videos and I do know that they can all get up to the 32 amps and the temperature on this one did get a little hotter, but it still was within and below the 221 allowable degrees. First of all, the cheap ones, I would only use them for just simple DIY projects where I could actually see the wire or just simple little connections. Just don't have those tingly good feelings in the walls for these ones. It will mostly come down between these two. And I would say if size is an issue, like you've got like, I don't know, three or four of these, uh, you know, five wires you're connected in a big gang box. Well, the size will definitely play in, probably go with the Wagos. Uh, if not, if you got space, well, sure, why not use these? Now there is one little feature on the Wagos that isn't really a game changer to me, but might be to you. And that is that there's a little tiny hole right here. So then you can actually test 
the voltage or, or test whatever you want, continuity, without having to take you know the wires out. It goes right into the common bus bar, and so uh, you can test the Wagos without having to take anything apart. There is nothing on there. I actually thought there was a little gap right here on the Pittsburgh. There's not. This is actually just part of the housing shell. And for sure the price being half, yes, you can get this for about 10 bucks. And I mean, even if you wait for a coupon, then even cheaper. Um, so about 10 bucks for the pack of 25 and then Wagos for the very similar pack of the two, threes and fives is about $20. So honestly, these are going to be my go-to connectors from now on, unless I'm tight on space. I'm DIY Pro, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.